Canva's recent update might leave you wondering where are all your favorite features are for, for designing your YouTube thumbnails. We're going to walk through all of that so that you feel a little less overwhelmed and a little more confident using the new UI in Canva. Today's video is going to be a guide and I'm going to share with you essential things that you must know in order to craft your perfect thumbnail. Let's go to Canva's homepage and I'll show you where to start. If your Canva doesn't look like this now, it will in the future. The very first thing you need to know is where to get the size now that Canva's changed things up. The first way is by simply searching your content or Canva's content. So we're going to click the new search bar right here. You can type in YouTube thumbnails and hit enter. Here are a bunch of templates that you can use. You can click the plus right here and it's going to open up a blank YouTube thumbnail that's the right size for YouTube. The other thing is that you can click this little tab right here that says projects and you can see every single project that has the tag of thumbnail in it. You can even click type and go to designs. You can click category and click YouTube thumbnail there so that you can see every YouTube thumbnail size that you've done in the past. Let's go back to uh, templates again. If you click this, it's going to open it up and this is what the inside of new Canva looks like. These two icons are icons that I use frequently. If that's not what's there for you, then what you're going to do is click on social media. This pops up and it's still on social media and under popular YouTube thumbnail. That's going to pop up in that same window for you. That's how you get the correct size for your YouTube thumbnails. If you're wanting to use templates, they can also be found right here under the design tab. You can just scroll down and find a template that you like. This little left-hand panel right now is, to simplify it, I'm gonna call it hovering. It's hovering over the design. When I click onto the thumbnail, the left panel is going to close up. Watch this. And when I go back over and hover over design again, the panel opens up. If I hover over elements, it's got a purple color and we've got text, brand, and upload. It doesn't stay open when you do the hover over. It may be instinct for you to click on one of these icons. And let me show you what happens when you click on the icon. So if I click on uploads, the design shifts over. This no longer goes away when I click on the canvas. If I want that to disappear, then I can close it out and it goes back into hover mode. What's really important is to know how to upload an image. So you've got an image of yourself that you want to use on your thumbnail is to go to the uploads tab. It's right there under uploads file. If you click the three dots, you can even upload here. You can attach it to your Facebook account, Google Drive, Instagram, Dropbox, Dropbox and Google Photos. These are subject to change. Things that I show today may look slightly different in the future as more creators get this and leave their feedback. We're going to upload. So I'm going to click upload file and let's just use this picture as an example and open it. Just like before, the little upload is filling up. Here is that image. I'm just going to click that image, but you can also drag and drop that image. Everything up until now sort of has a similar feel. You may notice that something's missing right now. And what is missing is that top panel bar with things like positioning and color and edit image and everything like that. Here's the change. 
when you click on your image or your text or whatever you're wanting to edit, a hover bar is going to pop up. There are a bunch of things up here, but one of the things that I love is that right here is background remover. So I can automatically just remove the background quickly without having to click edit image and then clicking background remover. Background remover is a Canva Pro feature. I have a link for a free trial in the description box below. Canva Pro's background remover really is top notch. So now that we have this, I'm just going to slide these in a little bit. I like to make my box around the person as small as possible so that I'm not as distracted by the purple lines. We're just going to move me over to the side because typically you're going to have your person on one side or the other. What you need to know about this bar is that when you click edit, a right panel opens up instead of the left panel. That is a huge change. I've clicked the background and here are options, comment, delete, color, animate, position, and then there's a little see all. So whenever there's a see all, it's going to open up on the right hand side and give you more options. The next thing you need to know is how to add an outline, how to add a shadow effect to your thumbnail image. We click the image we want to add the outline to, and we click this little see all. And now we're going to go down here to effects and click on shadow. Shadow has six options. You're going to choose the option that works best for you. But in my case, I like to use outline, so I'm going to click on outline. I recommend playing around with this to get the size how you want it. And then you can click on color and change the color to be whatever it is that you would like. You can even change the intensity of this to make it a little more uh, translucent and not translucent at all and then we're going to click out of it. Just make sure that that little edge at the bottom isn't showing or you can make yourself big. How would you add words to this? If you hover over the text box, you do not have to click it. It's going to pop out and you can add your um, heading. I've got my brand kit set up with my font. You can simply add a text box and then size it to whatever you need new Canva. Just like the image, your little box is going to pop up where you can change the font right here. If fonts that you want aren't right there in that little pop out box, you can click see all and it's going to pop out on the right hand side so that you can find additional fonts that you want to use. But that's why having your brand kit set up is important because the fonts that you use are going to be right there in that little toolbar. You can change the size. You can change the color right here. Again, if the colors you want are not there, you can click see all and it's going to pop over on the right hand side. One thing that I would do with this would be click spacing and reduce the spacing. If there is something else that you need with text, you would just click the little uh, the little arrows there and there's your text effect. There's your uh, basics of text, things that you can do to all the words on your thumbnail. Uh, transparency, animate, which you wouldn't do to thumbnail, but that's where it is, position and copy style. Um, if you're a pro member, you can translate the text as well. Let's add a little outline and change the color. We're going to click back on this and we can increase the thickness. The background is the same as the other things. The uh, You can change the color to whatever you want here or open it up. You could even, if you're on a Chrome browser, use the color picker and pick something out from your picture and add it 
Now, your thumbnail is probably going to be a little more complicated than this, but I wanted to show you those five basic skills that you definitely need to know in order to craft a thumbnail. If you want to see what the thumbnail looks like small, on a small scale, there's two things that you can do. The first thing is this little cider right here. You can reduce it really tiny and see what it looks like small. This might give you an idea of what it would look like on a mobile device. See if you can see the words, see if the thumbnail makes sense. The other thing you can do is click grid view and it's going to make it smaller and you can see everything that's within your design to see if something stands out so that if you've done multiple options, you can go, okay, I like thumbnail A better than thumbnail B better than thumbnail C. But with YouTube's test and compare thumbnail testing coming out, they say sometime in summer 2024, I'll believe it when I see it. It would be a good idea to craft two or three different types of thumbnails to do that test and compare testing. How do you download it? And that's simple. It's right here. Share button. Download. PNG. If you've got multiple pages, you would choose your page and download it. I hope you know how to upload it into your YouTube channel. If for some reason it says the file's too big, this is what you're going to do. You're going to click this little down arrow and change it to JPEG. That should help reduce it enough. It should fit. It should work for YouTube thumbnail. The bonus tip that you definitely want to know, if you are going into a design that you've done before and you're on the new Canva UI, when you click on it, basically what it's going to do is open up a preview window and your homepage is still there on the side. The good thing about the sneak preview is that you can look at it and be like, oh no, that's not the one I want. Close it out and then go, is that the one I want? No, that's not the one I want. Let me, let me look at this. Is this the one I wanted? Nope, that's not the one I wanted. You're all in the same window. Oh, I think it's this one. Is this the one I wanted? And then I can scroll all the way across and go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the one I wanted because I wanted, I wanted this particular thumbnail. Well, when I click this, it now opens up in that tab. I love that feature about the new Canva UI. I want you to let me know in the comments, do you have the new version of Canva or are you still using the old one? In order to, in order to, really? Jennifer, why can't I say in order to design?